Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, for those of you keeping track, this is video number five tonight. <laughs> so I'm on a uh, video binge or purge or whatever you want to call it. Uh, like I said before, it was a rare night off, so I thought I'd better take advantage of it. Uh, like I said, I had several uh, things to show, but I'm trying to break it up in, so the videos won't be so long. Uh, anyway, this last one I kind of saved the best for last. Uh, got some Silver Age stuff, uh, a few Bronze Age things. Uh, one thing I do have, uh, I found a uh, guy that was selling a lot of some of the uh, Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams uh, Green Lantern and Green Arrow books. And uh, the ones I got, the ones that I didn't have, uh, kind of low grade. And then the ones, uh, the other ones I had are just kind of upgrades. And a couple of them, three of them I never did have. Uh, but I got a pretty good deal on them. And uh, this is just to, uh, just so I could have the book. Uh, this is the second, Denny O'Neill and uh, Neil Adams, Green Lantern. It's number 77. Uh, it's pretty much a reader. Got a big chunk out of the cover. Uh, but I got these for a really good deal, so it's kind of hard to pass up. And I know you can, they, you know, they've reprinted these things dozens of times, but I just kind of wanted the book. Uh, so most of these were in Mylar already, uh, for some reason, but uh, I'm not complaining. So we have uh, number 77. Great cover. And this is basically another reading copy, but I didn't have this one. Uh, this is number 84. Uh, this is an upgrade to my original. This is number 83. No way to get around the glare on these because they're in Mylar. Sorry about that. But anyway. Number 81. A very cool cover. This is in pretty good shape. I would call this probably a VG Plus. Got a few dings in it. Here's another upgrade, number 80. Probably call this a fine plus, very fine maybe. And one I've been wanting uh, since I first found out about the series when I was a kid. Uh, I saw this in an advertisement in one of the other books I had when I started getting back issues and I always kind of just thought this was the coolest cover ever. You know, I know number 76 has got a great cover, but this was my favorite out of the whole run. Number 78. The Black Canary on the cover. And this was in uh, actually pretty decent grades, probably another fine to fire it very fine few dings in it. Just a great cover. And I think for this one he was uh, actually uh, inked, Neil Adams was inked by Frank uh, Giacoya, or however you pronounce his name. And actually, uh, I kind of like his, uh, his his stuff just as good as I do Giordano's. So really happy to get this one. Okay, the rest of this stuff is uh, mostly Silver Age. There's a few Bronze Age thrown in. Uh, some DC and Marvel. Okay, Fantastic Four number 80. I think this is against the Living Totem. Maybe the first appearance. Classic Lee and Kirby stuff.
Okay, some Daredevil, number 39. Some great art inside by Gene the Dean Cohen. And then my wife and I have actually been watching uh, the Daredevil series on Netflix. And uh, I'm trying not to purge all the way through it. I mean, the show's just so good. Uh, so we're like up to episode number eight, I think. And uh, really loving it so far. And I'm, I was talking to my son earlier, and I think the second season is coming out to like early next year. So I'm trying to like save it. <laughs> but the uh, TV sh show is really good. And, uh, and everyone knows about the comics, so good stuff. Okay, some Silver Age Adam, number 12. New Time Pull Adventure featuring Edgar Allan Poe. Classic Gil Kane. Okay, Fantastic Four, number King Size Special, number eight. This repeats uh, one of the early uh, sagas with the Submariner. And if you've not been watching uh, the other videos in the background, we have the uh, theme music from the Planet of the Apes TV series, which I just recently acquired. It's a great cover on this one. Another one of those beautiful square-bound books. <laughs> and uh, I never was a big collector of this series. I collected it later on in the late 70s. But more and more I'm going back and getting some of the older issues. Uh, a lot of the early ones are a little bit pricey because they're by Jack Kirby. But uh, this is Challengers of the Unknown, number 64. The great Joe Kubert cover. And uh, in the backup story, I think you've got one of the early uh, reprints uh, when Jack Kirby was on this title. So for the Kubert cover and the Kirby reprint, that alone. But I just love this cover, love the colors. As the challengers go to the gallows. I'm sure they survive. Okay, a little bit of sci-fi going on here. Uh, Strange Adventures number 222. And I'm sure that's a uh, Murphy Anderson cover or Infantino and Anderson. Anderson. Uh, and this has actually got a brand new... At this time, uh, most of the stuff that was going on in Strange Adventures were reprints. Uh, from the 60s, but this actually has a brand new story with art by Gil Kane and Murphy Anderson, and I kind of flipped through it, it looks awesome. Uh, so for all you Gil Kane fans, good stuff. So, Strange Adventures 222. Okay, got some classic Teen Titans, number 36, 48 page giant for 25 cents. It's actually got some great art. We've got uh, George Tuska, another underrated artist. Uh, got a couple stories by Nick Cardi, and you actually got uh, an Aqualad story by Jim Aparo. So for all you Jim Aparo fans, uh, so you got three great uh, silver and bronze age artists in this: Tuska, Cardi, and Jim Aparo. So this is actually a pretty nice looking book. Uh, it's a Super DC Giant number 23, featuring uh, Tales of the Unexpected. And uh, this series is uh, another one of those little odd deals that DC had going on, because I think it started with like number 13, for some odd reason. And I'm, I've read the articles, but I can't remember what the deal was, if there was actually some more Giants that went through number 12, and this one picked it up, or... Uh, but it's just something I want to, I'm going to do some research on just to find out for myself. But uh, this is one that I didn't have. And I think 
they actually went up through like issue 27 on this. Uh, but this one was really high grade, and, got, and it would, you don't see this one much. It's sort of like the uh, there's a couple young love or young romance issues that's kind of hard to find too, just like the hundred page deals. But uh, this actually has a really nice cover in good shape and it reprints uh, some old mystery and horror stuff from DC in the 60s. So, Okay, some Spider-Man goodness. Amazing Spider-Man King Size Special number 7. Another square bound book. Which is actually in pretty good shape. It's a little blunted right here. But uh, these are hard to find with the perfect binding on them. And this has got three great reprints uh, by Lee and Ditko. Okay, here we have Spider-Man and his giant size man thing. Uh, I mean, Spider-Man starring, giant size Spider-Man starring man thing. Anyway, uh, I love man thing. Uh, this is one of the probably the only giant size Spider Man I didn't have. And it's square bound. It's square bound. But a nice cover. Uh, pretty nice shape. I'm not sure who did this. I think it's probably uh, Andrew and Esposito on the interior art. But uh, I just love this cover. Okay. Got a couple more. Uh, another one I'm really happy to have, uh, Justice League of America number 28. So I think I'm down to needing 15 to have all this series. Uh, this is in pretty decent shape, except for maybe a crease and you got a little stain here. Not worried. Uh, I just want to have them all. And you have the case of the forbidden superpowers. And the JLA is on the picket line. <laughs> okay, the last one I have here, uh, this is a title that I'd never even heard of up until probably uh, five or six years ago, and I'm a big fan of the old Charlton stuff, and I guess that's one way I discovered it. I was reading some articles, or I saw it on eBay, so I can't remember, uh, but this is one of those titles you rarely see, and uh it just it was just cool to me. It's a little oddball thing, but uh, this is the first issue of Eh, Dig This Crazy Comic. Now this is, uh, like I said, this is number one, probably uh, actually in pretty decent shape. And these are these very rarely pop up. Uh, I think issues like four, five, and six, or it only ran seven issues. And uh, this is sort of this is like like another mad thing. I think this uh, comic came out like uh, one year after Mad started. So actually there was Mad, then this book, then later on you had uh, you know stuff like Not Brandeck, Plop, Arg, Spoof, Crazy, you know, all that sort of parody stuff. And, but most of the stuff, uh, the art in here is done by Dick Ayers. And uh, I love Ayers stuff. And, uh, you know, of course, you know, he was a Marvel mainstay, inked uh, a whole lot of Kirby stuff. Uh, but this is one of those things like Mad... It's just uh, got some great stuff. Like I say, the issues like four through six, I think, or maybe five and six are probably more, ex or actually a whole lot more expensive than number one because they have good girl art or they have the chick with the tiny waist and the big top. And, uh, you know, so those are, uh, those are like Mondo expensive. Uh, but I got a pretty good deal on this one and I was really happy to have it. Uh, just one of those little oddball things that, uh, you know, catches your fancy and, uh, now I'll probably uh, want to go after the other six. So, uh, but anyway, I thought this was a cool, cool pickup. So, eh, number one. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I think I'm done for tonight. Uh, I think I might kick back and watch some TV and then sleep a little bit before work again. So, but anyway, uh, appreciate you guys, and onward and upward.